Game Boy Color is no stranger when it comes to backlight kits. It could be argued that this was the console that single-handedly started the mass proliferation of retro handheld backlight kits way back with Ben Ben's AGS adapter cables and Freckle Shack. We now have no shortage of options with trends moving toward larger screens and IPS technology. One of the latest kits to hit the market is this IPS kit dubbed the Q5 OSD. So how does it stack up to its predecessors? Let's find out. How's it going? My name is Tito and welcome to another episode of Retro Renew. Today we're going to be looking at yet another backlight IPS kit for the Game Boy Color. Now if you watched my recent episodes on backlighting the Neo Geo Pocket Color and Wonderswan Color, you may notice some similarities with those kits and the one we're going to be looking at today. This kit has been dubbed the Q5 OSD kit, where the Q5 denotes the origin of the IPS panel, which is from a BlackBerry Q5, and OSD which denotes on-screen display. Yes, this kit features the on-screen display that we saw on both the Neo Geo and Wonderswan kit. If you haven't checked out those episodes already, I'll leave a link to both of them down below. So seeing that the OSD appears to be the same as those other kits, it made me think that this comes from the same creator and manufacturer, which goes by the name of High Speed I Do. Now I actually purchased this kit from Handheld Legend and not from eBay, but looking at the photos from each listing, it seems that they are exactly the same. So apart from the OSD, this kit also further enlarges the on-screen real estate. It appears to be even larger than the older IPS kit that I installed into this Game Boy Color with a boxy pixel shell. And of course, as you can see, it is also much larger than the original non-backlit Game Boy Color screen. All right, as usual, I'm gonna start things off by briefly going over everything I'll be using for this project. Then I'll show you how to put it all together, discuss the key features of the mod, go over the pros and cons, and end things by providing you with my overall thoughts. The first thing we have here is the Q5 IPS panel. As I mentioned prior, this came from an older BlackBerry device and is a bit shorter than some of the other IPS kits we have seen in the past. Next we have the driver board. Now this looks to be quite similar to both the Wonderswan and Neo Geo kits as can be seen by the two touch sensors on the PCB and the general layout of the PCB itself. On top here you can see the pads we'll be soldering to in order to enable and operate the OSD functionality. The kit also comes with some fine solid core wire as well as some insulating film. And the last item in the kit is this custom glass screen lens which has a much larger viewing window to accommodate the larger image the IPS panel displays. Now since the donor Game Boy Color Shell is in some pretty rough shape, and because I've been on a little Pokemon kick recently, I decided to pick up this really cool Pokemon themed shell. I unfortunately won't be able to use this neat screen lens due to the larger display, but I'm fine with that. And the last thing I have here are some 3D printed aligning brackets to make sure the IPS screen is nice and centered. These are published on the Retro Modding Thingiverse account, and they also have this trimming template which will help mark the area you need to trim on the shell to accommodate the larger image. Okay, I think I covered everything, so without any further ado, let's start this project. Okay, so we got this pretty beat up Game Boy Color but we're gonna breathe some new life into it. First things first, we need to tear it down by removing the six tri-wing screws. Once cracked open, remove the three Phillips screws holding down the motherboard. Then unlatch the LCD ribbon cable. And now the motherboard is free. Go ahead and set aside the front shell. We won't be needing it again. This Game Boy Color was absolutely filthy, as you can see by looking at the speaker. I went ahead and gave it a good clean, along with the button contacts and other parts of the motherboard. Mm. 
Once finished, grab the new shell. We have a lot of trimming to do. All the areas I'm highlighting with the permanent marker needs to be removed. The method I prefer is to use my craft knife to score large sections of plastic and then use a pair of needle nose pliers to fatigue the plastic until it comes off. I find that this method removes the plastic nearly flush to the shell, which is exactly what we want. Now you'll find that there are some areas where you'll need to use some flush cutters, such as these areas shown here. I almost forgot, since we're using the 3D printed bracket, you'll need to trim this area too. Once all areas are removed, I used my chisel tipped craft knife to remove any rough spots. And then I finish things off with a file to make the surface nice and smooth. And this is what it should look like so far. You'll also need to trim the battery LED shroud so that it's flush with the 3D printed bracket. And this is how it should look. Now we need to enlarge the viewing area. Start by placing the 3D printed template where the screen lens would normally be. Then use a craft knife to score the plastic area that needs to be trimmed. Then use your flush cutters to make a small incision at each corner, which will allow you to follow the same method of removal we used inside the shell. Once completed, use your craft knife to clean up the edges. And this is the final product. You can now go ahead and install the 3D printed brackets. Peel off the protective film on the IPS panel, and then drop it into the shell. Now I ran into an issue. The brackets were extremely tight fitting to a point where it was causing the LCD panel to bow. So I decided to use the included double sided tape. After applying the tape, I installed just the top and right side 3D printed brackets, which will help to align the IPS panel with the tape holding it in place. Now let's move our attention to the driver board. Go ahead and pre-tin the three pads labeled Select, A, and B. Then solder the included wire to each pad. And this is what it should look like. Now go ahead and pre-tin the test pads labeled P11, P12, and P10. This is the Select, A, and B button test pads. Next, align the wires from the driver board like so, ensuring you have enough slack and length. And then cut and solder each wire to its designated test pad. And this is the final result. Now place the included insulating film onto the rear of the IPS panel. Position the driver board on top and connect it to the IPS panel. I used a bit of Kathon tape to secure the driver board so it doesn't move around. And then place the other piece of insulating film on top. 
Now take this opportunity to place the touch sensors into each corner. Then drop in all the buttons and membranes. Fold the motherboard into position and then secure it with the three Phillips screws. Drop in the power switch and IR cover and then install the rear shell. Then fasten the six tri-wing screws to button up the console. Install the new larger glass screen lens and finish things off by installing the rear label. Drop in a couple AA batteries, peel off the protective film, and you're done. Honestly, the screen is just fantastic. The display is incredibly large, the colors are vibrant, and there are just so many features to go over, so let's start with that. As far as I can tell, this is the most feature-rich backlit kit on the market for the Game Boy Color. The reason being is the on-screen display, which has many great customizing options. To start, in order to open the OSD menu, press select A and B at the same time. To move the cursor up and down, press either A or B. First, let's go over how to use this menu system. Here we have the vertical screen position customizing option. In order to select this, press select and A at the same time. Then to make an adjustment to the screen's vertical position, press either A or B. To save your changes and exit back to the main menu, press select and A at the same time. And to exit the OSD menu altogether, press select and B at the same time. Now changing all other settings with the OSD menu will follow this same exact process. So let's quickly go over everything else that you can adjust with this menu. First is brightness. Next is a vertical screen position, which we just went over, followed by the horizontal adjustment. Then we have pixel effect, battery display, which isn't a feature on this mod, color adjust, and factory reset to bring everything back to the default settings. Now, while this menu is great, it can be a bit cumbersome if you had to access it whenever you wanted to change a setting. Thankfully, the kit utilizes touch sensors for some really great shortcuts. Tapping the right sensor adjusts the brightness. You have about 10 levels to select from. Tapping and holding the sensor doesn't do anything. Now, tapping the left sensor cycles through some different color palettes, which really isn't useful on the Game Boy Color. This feature is really meant for monochrome displays such as the DMG and Game Boy Pocket. However, tapping and holding this sensor turns on pixel mode, which is a fantastic shortcut. This is something that I think people will toggle on and off more frequently. Great, so those are pretty much all the major features of the kit. Now let's get into the pros and cons. Starting with the pros, I have to say this is my favorite backlight kit. The larger display is absolutely beautiful, and it really is noticeably larger. Based on what I've read, it is integer scaled, and I have not noticed any shimmering at all which backs those claims. All in all, I am absolutely in love with this kit. The next pro is the on-screen display. If you don't get the centering correct after installing the screen, you have some wiggle room to correct any issues. Now the only thing you need to be careful of is to make sure that the screen isn't tilted since obviously you won't be able to correct for that. Upon further inspection, it looks like my screen is a little tilted and I may try to fix that a little bit later. And the last pro is pixel mode. It looks absolutely fantastic and for those looking for a more retro experience and aesthetic, this pulls it off perfectly. I will say that it does make the image appear to be a little bit darker, but other than that, it's a fantastic feature. And now, let's get into the cons. First and foremost, there is a significant amount of trimming needed to get this mod to fit in the shell. I would argue that this is the most difficult part of the mod, and it requires a significant amount of patience to do a good job. Also, I found that the 3D printed bracket to be way too tight, and I only ended up using part of it. The next con, which really isn't too big of a deal, is the soldering. In order to get the OSD functionality, you need to solder three wires. 
Now, with that said, if you're able to get the centering of the screen perfect, I would argue that the OSD is not needed because you can adjust the brightness and activate pixel mode with the touch sensors. The primary benefit of the OSD in my opinion is the ability to adjust the screen position. So something else that I've noticed is that when trying to power on the console with my older version 1.4 Crix EverDrive from 2014, it typically results in failed starts when using my Onaloop rechargeable nickel metal hydride batteries. Now, if I turn the brightness all the way down, requiring theoretically less power draw, I noticed that it would start up just fine and load a game. Also, playing original games had no issues whatsoever. I just had problems with my EverDrive cart. Now, on the other hand, switching to traditional alkaline batteries like these Energizer Max, I can power on with my flash cart at full brightness and load a game without any issues. So I guess it kind of stinks that I can't use my Onaloop batteries, but maybe it's time I replace them with some newer ones since these are well over five years old. So it may not be the fault of the Onaloop batteries, it could be that they're just a little bit older and not as strong as they used to be. So besides that short list of cons, I have to say that I am really liking this kit a lot. It has a ton of great features, and I think the pros greatly outweigh the cons. So there you have it, the OSD Q5 IPS kit for the Game Boy Color, my new favorite way to backlight the Game Boy Color console. As always, I'm curious about what y'all think of this build, so definitely leave me a comment with your thoughts down below. I hope you did enjoy this video. If you did, please give it a like and consider subscribing to the channel. You can find me on Facebook and Instagram at Macho Nacho Productions. I release content every Thursday, so be sure to turn on notifications. And as always, see you next time.